Welcome to, to Mother, Mother Daughter Projects. Projects. I'm Steph. I'm Vicki. And today we're going to show you how we install this sliding door. Recently at a conference, we met a company called Crownbolt. They made products just for Home Depot called Everbuilt. If you've ever bought screws or nuts or bolts or accessories, you've bought Everbuilt. When they asked if we'd be interested in trying some of their products, we jumped at the chance to try the sliding door hardware. I've been wanting to replace my laundry room door because it opens inward, which makes the space feel very small. So I thought if I replaced it with a sliding door, it'd make the room more functional and spacious. We didn't want to take off the existing trim around the door, so we needed a door that was wide enough to cover the trim and tall enough to work with the sliding door hardware. Well, we looked for one, but we couldn't find one, so we decided to make one ourselves. Join us as we show you how this door came together. We started by reading the instructions for the ever-built sliding door hardware. This is a great place to start, as the hardware dictated the thickness of the door. We drew out a simple plan of what the door would look like. The main structure of the door is a piece of plywood. To achieve the thickness needed for the hangers, we bought 1x3 lumber to make the frame. We're going to paint the plywood back blue for a pop of color and the 1x3 frame white. The front of the door will have slats of marker board to give it a shiplap look. Then we'll add a handle and the sliding door hangers. Next, we headed to Home Depot to get our supplies. The associates at Home Depot were great and cut our plywood exactly to the size we needed. First, we gave the plywood front, back, and sides a good sanding. Then we painted the front, back, and sides with kilts, primer, and sealer. This was important as there could be moisture from the laundry room. Next, the instructions show that the door needs to have a groove at the bottom for the floor guide to pass through. We decided we could easily do this with a table saw. We did a couple practice tries as this was our first time using a table saw, but it worked out great. We made one small cut, then we moved the table saw guide slightly and did another pass to create the width we needed. We tested the fit by passing the guide down the groove. Then we primed our 1x3 boards with the same kilts primer. To join the boards together, we used a Craig jig. A Craig jig makes pocket holes, which makes it easy to screw boards together. After we made all our pocket holes, we put the 1x3 boards in place and screwed them together. After all four boards were connected, we flipped over our frame so the pocket holes didn't show. Then we clamped the frame to the plywood and used wood screws to attach. We used wood filler to smooth out the edge of the door and fill the screw holes. We headed back to the table saw to rip the marker board down into 6 inch slats. It was very helpful to do this as a team and communication and safety are key. Next we sanded the edges of each slat to give it a little distressed look. Then we laid all the slats on top of the plywood. We glued each slat into place. We used leftover marker board and clamps to hold the glued slats in place. After it dried, we took the door inside and measured and marked the placement for the hanger holes. We screwed through the marker board, plywood, and 1x3 board, which took a little effort, but it worked. We pushed the hex bolts through the holes from the back, put the hanger in place, and attached the remaining hardware. After the hangers were in place, we moved the door into place. This was a challenge in a small space, but we did it. We put the door next to the wall and figured out where the rail needed to be placed. Following the instructions, the rail did not line up with our studs, so we needed to use a header board that would attach to our studs to which we would attach the rail. We got the placement of the header board and marked the studs. We pre-drilled the screw holes into the header board. In our second screw in, it split the wood. We happen to have a new product by DAP called Rapid Fuse, which is an all-purpose adhesive that sets in 30 minutes. We used it and clamped the wood in place. We finished attaching our header board and then marked and drilled our pilot holes for the rail. Using a ratcheting wrench, we screwed the rail into place. Moment of truth, we brought the door to the rail and it worked. Nice and strong. Next, we attached the door stops to each end of the rail and placed the anti-jump disc to the top of the door. 
Now we head to the bottom of the door to install the door guide. Mom did not want to drill into her tile floor, so we decided to use JB Weld, which is a quick setting epoxy that works on tile. We open the JB Weld, squeeze some into a container, and mix the epoxy together. We spread it on the floor guide and put it into place. While that was drying, we took out the old laundry room door. Lastly, we attach the handle and we're done. We love how this turned out and really like the shiplap look. But the neatest part of this whole thing is it's a dry erase board. I have a feeling the grandkids are gonna love this next time they're at Oma's house. What we learned. Barn doors seem to be everywhere these days. We even made a little version of a barn door a couple projects ago. But ever since then, we've been wanting to make a big, actual barn door. Barn doors use what's called sliding door hardware, and that's exactly what we used. We wanted a barn door, but we didn't want it to look like a barn door. We wanted something sleek and functional, and this one has a little extra special feature. <laughs> this project's very doable for a homeowner, but be prepared to move on to plan B, C, and D if A doesn't work out. So we originally installed our header board and our rail before making our door. So we got the door done, we put it up, and it fell down. No one got hurt, that was all fine, but the rail did not support our door, and that's because our wood, our header board wood was probably not strong enough and we didn't put enough support in. So we took that down and we moved on to plan B. We consulted with a builder friend of ours and he told us what kind of wood to use. And we used a piece that was longer and thicker and wider than the one we originally used. And instead of just putting screws in the middle of those studs, we used two on each stud and then the rail goes down the middle and it worked perfectly. <laughs> yeah, when we put our door on this time, no movement whatsoever. This is up there to stay. The nice thing about customizing your own door is you can do whatever you want, whatever kind of finish, like we use the marker board. And then on the back side, there's a little indentation where I could put a picture or I can put a piece of wire up there where I can hang wet socks. You can customize it however you want. We're really happy we tried this project. We learned so much from how to build a door to structural integrity. And we're so happy that we shared it with you today. Question for you, where would you put a sliding door in your house? What would you try, learn, share today? And for more projects and tips, visit motherdaughterprojects.com. That's pretty good.